Hello, Jungle Viewers. Welcome to a new episode of Out of the Park Baseball 19 as the Toronto Blue Jays. Um, so we just finished our second season, and we did, objectively, awful. We were 61-101. and um, It's not the worst record in league history, but it's still pretty bad. Let's begin by hiring some new coaches, because we need a new pitching coach, new hitting coach, new team trainer. Let's start with a team trainer, because it's the one thing you can't promote from lower in your organization. And it's really important to spend on the right things. Legs are good, but you really want to make sure that arms are good. Ooh. George Thomas, you're really good at legs and arms, and you're good at preventing arm injuries, which means you'll be great at protecting our pitchers. I'm going to go ahead and straight up offer you a deal, mate. Five years. Uh, now we need to take a quick look at our existing personnel and see if it's worth promoting anybody. And the answer is absolutely freaking not. Well, we tried. Pitching coach. And coach tendencies. So you want to start with someone that's got a great reputation. Of which we have three choices. Let's start Jeff Thomas, and we don't have any finesse pitchers, so the only reason to hire him is the fact that he's pretty young. Um, so we're going to go and just get Jeff Thomas for two reasons. One, if we do get a finesse pitcher, he'll be able to help them out. And two, uh, it is worth actually, because good isn't all far off of outstanding. It would only help Dave Stewart, and I'm not going to hire a personal pitching coach just for a reliever. <clears throat> so come to Toronto. We'll give you poutine. No, poutine a, is a Quebec thing, isn't it? I've never had it. I can't say that I actually do want it, but, you know. And we need a hitting coach. This is far more likely to matter. So, we have one good contact hitter, which is Gene Richards. How about power hitter? Roger Freed, who's not likely to be on the team much longer. And I will go all the way down to patience just to see. Literally no one is patient. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hire Luis Montez because he's super young. And he's also the best overall coach. He'd be even better if we had contact hitters. But for now, I think these are good personnel decisions. Now let's take a look at salary arbitration. Okay. Chris Flothy. Led the league in games started. Overall had a pretty good year. Don't worry, we will take a look at the team as a whole. Um, he's only 28, and he's not that expensive. Let's see what he would want in an extension. He just wants a one-year deal. Um, can I get you to take 170? Ooh, no, no, no. Wrong way. Wrong way. If he'll take 170, I will sign him to a New Year deal because I want to see uh, if we can see if he can rebuild on his uh, success. And maybe we can flip him um, for a prospect. Jeremy Britton is a pretty terrible pitcher who had a mediocre year but still thinks he deserves a raise. I disagree. So we're going to non-tender him. Rick Camp was manifestly an awful pitcher. I know he wasn't. What is this a minus 1.2 war? Doesn't make any sense to me. Camp has good enough overall stats, or ratings rather, that I'm inclined to let him have another year. He's really not asking for much. Uh, no, mate. I'll give you 54 grand. Okay. And this just means we don't have to worry about dealing with them later on. We're actually offering John D'Aquisito a pay cut. But here's the thing, right? 
His control is seven. On a scale of one to a hundred, he's a seven. There is no earthly way he deserves to be pitching for anyone. Withdraw that contract. Uh, Craig Scock. Scock is an interesting pitcher who really didn't get to pitch very much. So I am totally cool with giving him another year on the payroll. And 55 grain is all you're getting. Okay. Generally, if you offer people their arb estimate, they'll usually take the one-year deal, but they won't always do it. Okay, Mike Reenback is an awful hitter who only draws walks. This year, he somehow managed to luck into hitting a, a full war in AAA. I would never call him up. He gone. Oh, no, whoops. I actually didn't want to withdraw that for him, but it shouldn't actually matter because I made a contract offer. Ronnie Collins. Collins got a full year. More or less a full year. And he had 15 home runs and did virtually nothing else with the bat. And he was a pretty terrible second baseman. Non-tendered. Glenn Adams. Decent all-around outfielder. Uh, didn't hit great. Got way too many at-bats, so he got overexposed. Um, why am I thinking of keeping Adams? Because he plays three positions pretty damn well. But then again, surely I can find someone who does it even better. Nope. Now we get to Gene Richards. Of all the players we have, Gene Richards was, first of all, did a very good job last season. And second of all, he actually has the best chance of being on the next very good Toronto team. And he actually doesn't want that much money. Can I get you to take a three-year extension? We're basically just trying to buy out his arbitration years. No. I'm going to go and just give you 100 grand then. And we'll revisit this next year maybe. There we go. It's a pretty hefty pay cut. but Or pay increase. But he deserves it. Um, Jim Bibby, I am totally cool with offering arbitration to. Because um, I want the draft pick if he says no. I don't think he will. But yeah, definitely. Pete Lecoq, same thing. Um, He actually did okay offensively. Which doesn't match with what we normally expect. But he did hit doubles. He had a crap ton of triples. Which he probably can't repeat. Um, drew a fair number of walks and probably played some pretty good first base. I am perfectly okay with offering him arbitration as well. Steve Blast, we want to bring him back. For 200 grand, he can bite me. I am not spending that much money to a mediocre player. Mike Caldwell. Suck. Rich Coggins. Mm, too expensive. Roger Freed, absolutely eh, mediocre and expensive. Actually, Roger Freed is actually basically cheap. I would re-sign you for another year, depending how much my... Oh, oh, hell no. Go take a walk, Ed Kirkpatrick, and go fuck yourself, Ken Reynolds. Um, Hal McRae, we could put on the minor league roster and keep. I don't think he's worth it. Everyone else here seems pretty crap. So we'll go ahead and let everyone else walk. I think that's a good setup for our salary arbitration. So let's take a quick moment and talk about what our team did well and maybe what it didn't do so well. Flothy and Bibby were acceptable pitchers. And that sounds like damning with faint praise. That's because it is. 2.7 more for an ace is just... Eh? I mean, he's not the worst pitcher in history, and he did some good stuff. Um, but he's not going to be the ace of our next great team. 
Bibby was a good little dumpster dive, and I'm hoping we get something close to this performance. Two War is really good. Um, the best he's had since maybe ever in our league. Yeah, it's his best year at the age of 33. Now, maybe it's it's not a bad risk to hope that he puts in together another decent year and that we can trade him and get some prospects for him. Um, McKaney did pretty good as a closer, actually, so that's good to hear. Steve Blass was decent. Um, Don Stratton is a crime against uh, humanity. He basically never struck anyone out and walked everyone and then gave up lots of home runs. He did everything you don't want them to do. Um, and yeah, the rest of the pitching staff ranges from average to object objectively terrible. Um, yeah. Twasn't good. Let's look at the lineup. How did our hitters do? I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about this because, um, forgive me for not recalling the name. Someone in the comments asked me, what stats do I look at to determine who, what people are good at? I always start with war, but the important thing is you don't end with war. Um, so our two, our two best all-around players by war are Gene Richards and Pete LeCock. Um, we've got a few people who were above replacement level, which at this point is acceptable. Uh, Tim Rank's actually really good in limited playing time. Um, and then you've got the more disappointing players like Coggins and other players. So this gives me a good general idea, but let's see who was good offensively. And it's pretty much Gene Richards and no one else. Gene Richards was our only confident offense, competent offensive bat. Um, so you basically want a WOBA. It scales to on base percentage, so anything above like 330 to 340 is pretty good. Um, Lecoq, Reigns, and Bergaud, or Bagnaud, all were kind of like, eh. Uh, Gene Richards was genuinely good. Um, you could also check OPS Plus and get the same type of thing. Um, for other players, I bet a lot of Lecoq's value came from his defense. Uh, what about Mookie Wilson? He actually had a pretty decent more. His offense was almost was borderline league average, and he's actually just slightly below average in center field. Because of the position adjustment for center field, that looks like a good center fielder, even though it's not all that great. Uh, Mike Champion, hit like shit, was a really good shortstop. Um, and a player like that has plenty of value for us. Mark Williams, again... Pretty good defense at two different positions. Mediocre offense. I'm not saying we can't do better. Um, the only actively bad player was Mark Harris. Because Mark Harris combined... Oh, God. So. Mark Harris... Was more... Every other Major League Baseball player was more than twice as good as him. Not by much, but more than twice as good. Mark Harris was awful. And we'll probably want to be replacing him too. So again, there are no standouts. But there's also no one that's actively like dragging the roster down except for Harris. We need more talent. That's undeniable. But no one's an active detriment to the roster. Um, a full year of Tim Raines, and he'll probably easily be the best player. And I think... Looking at these numbers, very good on base percentage. That's a very tasty 409. Average could be better. I'd like a little bit more power, but he only had 116 at bats. It almost produced a full win above replacement. Um, that's really good for this team. And it means that had he played a full raw, a full season, he might have been somewhere close to 5 war, which is like all-star level. Even down year MVP. Um... Yeah. So those are some of the big things I try to look at. You also want to make sure you look at trends. Um, so we look at Pete Lecoq. Um, last year was his best year in the majors by a pretty substantial margin. But it's also the first year he played all year long. 
Does this mean we should expect this level of, of performance? It doesn't seem hugely out of sync with his overall stats, but there are a couple of things that make me nervous. First of all is the number of triples. It is almost impossible, almost impossible, to produce great numbers of triples from year to year to year to year to year. Um, so it's a really bad bet that he's going to hit 14 triples again. He may never hit 14 triples again. I mean, just 1974, just four years ago, he hit, zero, he hit one triple. So we can't count on that as a reliable barometer of power. Home runs, he's jumped all over the place. Doubles could be a little better. The 283 is probably not sustainable. Because we look at his contact, he's basically slightly below average. If 50 is average, he's slightly below that. 283 is way above average. And up until last season, he'd never hit very far above 200. Um, what was his Babbitt like? So when he uh, put the ball in play, he hit 298. Um, so basically, he was really good at putting the ball in play. Better than his, his uh, career averages. So Lecoq isn't a great bet to produce the same level as he did last year. But on the Toronto Blue Jays, like as long as you're above replacement level, you kind of get to keep your job. Plus, he, we may not keep him anyway. He may very well end up walking off with um, to another team. So that's an example of how to analyze a player who looks good on the surface. Um, right here, I can tell you the champion's value is entirely defense because his batting runs, he was basically worth negative two wins. That's how bad his offense was. He provided some value base running, so the rust must come from defense, and we already looked at champion earlier, and that matches up. And then there's players like Philkins who provide no value whatsoever. Stealing 10 bases is useless if you also get caught 11 times. Um, so the general rule of thumb for Major League break-even rate is 75%. You want to basically steal your bases 75% or higher um, over the course of a full season. Right. The last thing to think about is who of our minor leaguers we might want to promote. We are not loaded at catcher. But Chili Davis had a pretty crappy year in AAA. I think another year in A-ball, especially since he's only 18, is a good use of our time with him. Uh, Mark Culley, Culley, uh, good overall hitter, but we want to give him a little bit more time, especially since he wasn't that great in AAA. Let's see how he deals with next year. And there's really no other prospects that look like they're ready. Um, we've got a lot of very young players, but we don't have any that seem to be major league ready. Um, Pensiero, he's got really good stam stamina, but there's really no other reason to, that nothing else that really recommends him to me as someone I want part of my team. Uh, Joe Mitchell is a bad defensive center fielder who's pretty good at drawing walks, has some value, maybe. John Allman, same thing, except he plays right field and he's an even worse hitter. Um, it's going to take a while to build up this farm system to the point where we can start plugging and playing people. But that'll be partly the farm's build this trap. So no one in the minor leagues, I think, is ready. I could maybe rush one or two in as a, an emergency replacement. Um, Philip Carnucci might make the roster just because we're losing um, what's-his-face. He steals bases, which is really rare for a catcher. And his bat has the potential to be at least mediocre. And a backup catcher, that's honestly what you're looking for. Um, and he actually had a pretty good year in AAA. So I think I will go ahead and promote him to the Major League roster just for now. Mike Morgan's one of our best prospects, and he's kind of cratered his development. Yeah, look at his scouting report. It was kind of like... Uh, he is improving in velocity, and he's still super young, so we're not going to give up on him yet. He even here it says the potential rating is 45. Here it only says 22, so you can never quite trust that until it's right after this game point. So let's go ahead. I think we've, we've wasted enough time. Let's go ahead and sim forward. Um, our players all signed their one-year deadline, or one-year deals... Uh, 
Jeff Thomas took his deal. Um, where can I see my pending offers? Okay, it's right here. And they both like the offer, so eventually they'll sign. It's just a question of when. There goes the trainer. That was a big get. I'm glad we've got a, a good trainer to keep our players healthy this year. I mean, they all suck, so, you know, it doesn't really matter who's healthy and who isn't. Now, one of the most important things we need to keep in mind, we cannot spend heavily on free agency unless we're absolutely certain the player is such a special talent that he's still going to be with the team in two to three years. Otherwise, we're wasting money. Or if we think we can flip him and make like a really good trade with him at some point, and then we just sign to a one or two year deal. I just want to see who won the different things this year. Um, a Johnny Bench won a gold glove. No one in Toronto did. Um, Enrique Romo. Huh, Will McKinney got a, got a few votes. That's kind of neat. Silver Slugger, not a damn one of us. Uh, AL Rookie of the Year, Mookie Wilson, got a few votes. Not very many, but some. Eddie Casco, the Braves Walters. We have no one remotely worthy of MVP. Of MVP. Holy shit, Christopher Hermano won the MVP? He had a pretty damn great season. I'm not going to lie to you. That's a pretty amazing season. Philadelphia, you are moronic to trade him. I don't care if it did win you the playoffs. He's such a good player at such an important position. That's a damn fine baseball player. All right. Let's keep simming. We're going to smoke to free agency filings. So we're looking for good deals. Um, players that we can flip and turn around because... It doesn't make sense to spend a lot of money on a player. Oh, they both filed for free agency. That's reasonable. Uh, what does Bibby want to come back for a second year? Oh, he wants 90 grand. So this is, we're basically betting that he'll be able to reproduce his season. I don't know that I trust a 34-year-old to reproduce his season. What does Pete Lecoq want? He wants a shit ton of money. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dive in for either of those. Okay. So we are looking for players. If we're even going to uh, we're not we're not signing any free agents that require a draft pick. I am not coughing up the level of the number one draft pick. It's just never gonna happen. Can you bloody put compensation type here? Where the hell do you put compensation type? In previous versions of OTP, you could actually check on you could click you could check the information and it would tell you his compensation type, his free agent class. For some reason that's not available now. Um Sorting by age, Dave Collins was the first name I see that makes sense. No compensation. A really good speed, but here's the, I mean, is he better than Mookie Wilson? The answer is almost assuredly yes, but I'm going to check, just to be on the safe side. And he's damn sure better than Mark Williams, but is he better than Mookie Wilson? Oh yeah. And I don't have a center fielder that's near the minors that I want to give a promotion to. So I'm going to go ahead and put in an offer on Dave Call. Ah, uh, 190 grand though. That's awful expensive. But I've got a more than a million to play with. What kind of deal does he want? He wants a one-year deal. I'm going to offer him this deal. Because I suspect he's going to have a pretty good season and we might be able to trade him at the trading deadline. I don't want to get locked down to any player for a long period of time. Rick Roden. We can always use a boost of the bullpen and he's a borderline starter. 
I will give you a guaranteed major league contract. 80 grand. Done. Uh, other players. Jim Barr. No, hey, there's Mickey Rivers again. Craig Swan for 80 grand. Again, another borderline starter. Yes, please. We're going to build a bullpen on the cheap. Okay, third base. We could pick up Steve Braun. Oh, no, 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 no. Bill Bonham is the cheap one. Okay. He's a reasonably good reliever. He's not a starter. He's just not. I'm going to go ahead and put in for Bonham, too. All right, let's stack this bullpen. Um, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a quick look at the team. This is what the meet team design, meet the team screen was designed for. And we just have nothing of any consequence. So no one we really hire as long as they're not second base or right field is going to be pushing anyone aside. Let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and narrow it down to batters. Hello, Vito Lucarelli. Would you like to join this team? Yes, you would. Easy choice. Yeah, Dave Collins, we already put in an offer on. Anyone basically, I'm looking for numbers under 200 grand. Bob Sheldon. We're kind of good at shortstop, but he also plays second. Yeah, done. I will happily put in an offer for Bob Sheldon. I'll probably play him at second rather than short. Or I'll probably play him at a different position. But yeah, I'll put in for him. 190 for a shortstop? No. Gary Matthews Sr.? No. Uh, Alfonso? Offer minor league deal. Minor league deal. One more minor league deal. Yeah, two more, I lied. We do need a third baseman. So let's go ahead and narrow it down to third base. Okay, Bob Sheldon plays third, and he's really good at it. So I'm perfectly fine with that. Any other upgrades we can make that are actually worth it? Or what about, like, first base? Willie Montan, yes, is a decent overall hitter. And again, he doesn't want much money. So sure, we'll go ahead and, and we'll put in for him. Oh, no, 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 no. Shit, he wants a two-year deal. I'll give you a one-year deal, but I'm not giving you two. All right. That's a good enough start in free agency. A lot of these players will either choose not to sign with us. The important thing is we under no circumstances are getting into a bidding war. If another team wants to spend more money on these guys, we back off. You're free to sign with other people. Do we get any responses from anyone? Draft pool revealed. Some really good choices here. Fernando Valenzuela, Gary Gaetti, Brett Butler, Kent Herbeck. I don't know who Eugenio Cotez is. Howard Johnson, not the same one, by the way. Dan Gladden and Andre Scalaraga, Johnny Ray. There's some genuine talent here. Um, I'm not seeing any name that pops out at me except for maybe Valenzuela as being first overall pick worthy. And Valenzuela, the way he looks in this league, maybe he's not worth it. Of course, that also could be our scout devaluing him because OSA thinks he's he could be much better. We're going to see what happens when we actually look at the draft pool.
Other people want to sign the big free agents, that's fine. I'm not going to spend a bunch of money on one or two free agents. Okay. So, we got a bunch of people signing minor league deals, which is good. But most importantly, we got Dave Collins. And Dave Collins gets a chance to play every single day. This is a really good signing. Because even if he doesn't work out, he's only going to cost us money. He's a good hitter, good at drawing walks, very fast, plays very good center field. We need a player like this on the team. It does mean Mookie Wilson doesn't have a place to play, but it actually means Mark Williams doesn't have a place to play. Um, well, Mark Williams is actually pretty decent, too. We'll find a spot for the people that really need one. Um, all my relievers seem to be pretty happy. We got Rick Roden. That's lovely. We did need a better relief staff. We actually need starters. Um, we might convert some of these relievers into starters. Are there any good starters who want, like, a cheap deal, like a one-year deal to kind of make good? Clay Kirby, maybe. Mark Bombeck is super cheap. Yeah, let's go in and grab him. And I might spring for Clay Kirby. Good stamina, good all-around pitcher. I will go ahead and offer you a one-year deal as well. We'll do two years with a team option. And I'll give you 50 grand if for some reason I keep you and you buy it out. Okay. And if you want, if, if again, if most of these people ask for more money, I'm just going to tell them no. A personal message. Mark Baumbach and immediately Pittsburgh offered him more money. Enjoy your life as a Pittsburgh pirate, mate. Uh, we acquired Craig Swan. And damn, people are like, holy shit, you got Craig freaking Swan? And I did get Craig freaking Swan, but people like spooch their pants over him. I wonder why. Hm. Hey, I'm happy if they're happy. Okay. We really need to make sure we don't miss on our first round draft pick. We got Bill Bonham and we got Bob Sheldon. We picked up, we've picked up some good pieces, um, and we got Willie Montanez, which I totally missed. Oh, uh, you'll be playing first base for us, Senor Montanez. Uh, Les Filkins could be very, very good one day. We seem to give him some time to keep developing. First year player draft. Man, the fans seem to be really excited by all of my cheap moves. They're going to be pissed off at me when they all leave next season. Eh. We've got a decent rotate. We've got a rotation now. Almost a decent rotation. What's wrong with me? Okay. Do we literally have no minor league teams now? Oh, we do. Okay, good. I hope we get a double-A team at some point. All right, number one pick. Can't blow it. Potential rating. Uh, all players, please. Okay. We think Andres Galarraga is the best guy in the draft. OSA is pretty high on him, too. We think he's going to get crazy good contact, superstar power, um, decent catcher slash first baseman. Uh, 
Uh, actually, OSC thinks he's much more well-rounded. So Galarraga is a possible... Wait, what just happened here? Oh, Oral Hershiser's in this draft, too. What do we think of Oral Hershiser? We really like Oral Hershiser, too. And we do need pitching. Why does our scout think he's not a starter? What the hell is going on? Is this not the same Oral Hershiser? Oral Hershiser started almost 400 games. Over 400 games. Why do they think he doesn't have any stamina? I don't know. I'm not going to take Earl Hershiser if they think that poorly of him. <clears throat> We've got Don Mattingly. A very good all-around hitter. Although we're maybe more high on him than other people are. Bill Schroeder is closest to being Major League ready. Then there's Brett Butler. I think we maybe take Don Mattingly. Um, because his ceiling is super crazy high. And, yeah. That's what you're looking for in a number one overall draft pick. Real Don Mattingly was not this good, by the way. You'd expect real life Don Mattingly had like 300 and like 50, 40 homers every year. Don Mattingly was good. He wasn't that good. Um, he especially had power problems in the majors. Is there a reason not to take... The only reason not to take him is because we would take a starter. Could we grab Valenzuela in the second round if we grab Mattingly now? Cause, so let's pretend that OSA is the worst possible outcome. That's still a really good baseball player. We think he'll be legendary. OSA thinks he'll be really, really good. I'm overthinking this Dom Mattingly. Uh, gonna cost us money. We got tons of money to spend on the draft. Let's draft him. So it's our next pick. Okay. Are there any good pitchers left? There's Alejandro Pena. Who OSA really likes and we kind of like. So that's a good reason to take him. Even though he's not going to start very much if at all. Ah, uh, he's impossible. Screw you, mate. Rich Rodos, really good stuff, really good stamina. As a draft pick, this isn't the worst I've ever seen. OSA thinks we're overselling his pitch types. If I, I'd rather take him maybe with a third round draft pick. What else do we have player wise? A Donnie Scott, an amazing defensive catcher who's pretty decent offensively. Bunch of catchers. Jose Oquendo, who draws walks, steals bases, plays shortstop, and does literally nothing else. Any names I recognize? Not really. Steve McQueen. I don't think it's that Steve McQueen. Oquendo's only 15. And he's a good enough shortstop and good enough base runner that he'll provide plus value. I'm going to take Jose Oquendo. We'll see how he turns out. Let's look at pitchers. We're going to take Rich Rodas now because I think he's actually got a chance to be pretty okay. And I don't want him slipping past me. All right, let's look for really good contact hitters. Uh, Joe Larnsford is an amazing all-around hitter. Why are we not rating him higher? 
He'll strike out a bunch, but this is a really good overall skill set. Yeah, Joe Lansford. That's kind of a duh. And then let's look and see if there's any special um, pitchers with, like, incredibly huge stuff. Kevin Joyce will never throw a strike, but damn if that man won't strike people out. Do it. And then we'll go ahead and take Rich Carlucci, too. Oh, we'll take Rick Miles. Why not? They're not going to turn out to be anything, but it's interesting to see what might happen. Let's go and complete the draft. The thing is, these drafts we're running to aren't that deep. They're basically all one round deep. I really can't believe they really think Oral Hirschheiser has no stamina. Um, we may regret not taking Hirschheiser. Maybe. Notice that Don Mattingly didn't even make the list here. Who ended up taking Valenzuela, I wonder? The Tigers took him with the fifth overall pick. I guess it was a little bit silly to expect he'd fall to the first, uh, fall to the second round. Uh, yeah, without any hesitation, Don Mattingly. I hope he gets through the minors quickly, because he's an exciting player that could really kick some life into this franchise. We did good. Um, I can't say that any of our players were drafting as necessarily, except for Mattingly, is necessarily like all-time brilliant. But that's not always what you're looking for. Mediocrity would actually be an improvement over most of our positions at this stage. It's hard to argue in that draft class that anyone but Mattingly should have been first overall. Rule 5 draft. Oh yeah, I did not check my Rule 5 draft pool, did I? Let's just real quickly take a look at that. I know, I got, uh, I got some shit from a commenter a while ago. Totally fair, by the way. Um, I got 10 open spots. Tatis actually might have a future, so I'll put him on the, the 40, man. I don't care about Scott Woodner or anyone lower than him. Gene Laguna, eh. I just signed him as a minor league free agent, I know, but I can't see anyone wanting him that desperately. Yeah, we got a lot of garbage. So let's rule five draft this bitch. Any crazy good or crazy high potential players? Godfrey Evans would be a nice little future shortstop, but he's got some pretty extreme weaknesses. Silvio Martinez, no... Larry Demery, no. I want people with at least reasonable control. Who's the potential for it? Um. So remember, anyone we take is going to have to spend the entire year on the rule file on the major league roster, or we have to return them. James Hulse has a good eye and a decent amount of pop, and had a good year in AAA last year. I know we're kind of loaded at first base for the future, but the present for first base is kind of... Is, oh, God, he's a DH. He's a DH. Could get Willie Wilson. Good speed, decent left fielder, good hitting for contact. Oh, uh, yeah, I actually will take Willie Wilson. We'll give him a shot in the uh, in the majors. My scout want me to take it? Nope, my scout thinks I should take no one, and I happen to agree. There's no one else that really stands out to me as being truly worthy of a Major League roster spot. Alright, let's sim forward. Um, oh, let's actually... I do want one more pitcher.
Is there one more starting pitcher who's still waiting for a home in free agency? I should be checking the waiver wire, too. I could get people for free. Ah, oh, Kirby wants more money. I'm not giving you more Kirby. Or I'm not giving you more Kirby. Mm. I could also go in on the big names now because I no longer have to forfeit a draft pick. Um, Carl Morton? Eh, he'd be a good reliever, but not a good starter. Good Lord, or you think highly of yourself, Joe Coleman. When are you supposed to come out? Seven to eight months. I'm going to pull another one of my favorite tricks. You're giving me two years. And I'm going to take a team option on you just in case you don't work out. Yeah, always look for guys that just suffered Tommy John surgery or something similar because you might be able to get them for super cheap. Is that, aren't you the one who played for Toronto? Oh, I traded you. I can get you back. Uh, Bill Grief is a really good pitcher. Is he worth over 200 grand? Oh, he's not worth 300 grand. Not to me. Ray Corbin sounds like my budget. Let's offer a deal to Ray Corbin. He wants a two-year deal. I'll give you a one-year deal, mate. There we go. Again, we're just filling in roster spots right now. Carlton Pisquist for the Chicago Cubs. That feels wrong. But, you know, eh. Oh, whoops, I never got to vote for the Hall of Fame. I'm stupid. Wow, okay. Steve Barber. Uh, Ernie Cub, or Ernie Cub. Ernie Banks, yes. Yes to Yogi, yes to Ken Boyer, no to Lou Brock. Jim Bunning, eh. Orlando Cepeda, eh. Rocky Calavito, eh. Kurt Flood. I'm going to, again, cast a ballot for him, but that's for his historical contributions. Juan Marichal, probably not. He would be better than the average starter, so maybe I should give him a vote. Willie Mays, no question. No question on Will. Uh, our version of Willie McCovey wasn't as good as the one in real life. He's still pretty good. But real life Willie McCovey hit over 500 home runs. I still think he's Hall of Fame worthy. Just maybe not to the same degree. Veda Pinson. That's an interesting argument. Good number of home runs and steals. How was he defensively? Ah, oh, it doesn't say here. Um, he won one gold glove and went to the All-Star game three times. But he was so overall productive. I think I'm going to give a shout-out to Veda Pinson on this ballot. Early win, please. Damn, talk about another player who ended up being disappointing. Carl Yastrzemski. I mean, guy went to the All-Star game a bunch of times. Won a bunch of gold gloves. Looks like he played center field in our, life, our time lap. We even won an MVP. But compared to the real Carl Yastrzemski, he's kind of disappointing. I mean, I still think he's worthy. But it's a shame he retired so early. Submit the ballot. I can't believe I almost forgot that. That's one of my favorite things to do in the season. If Willie Mays doesn't get into the Hall of Fame, frankly, no one deserves to go in the Hall of Fame. Willie Mays and Juan Marichal. Juan Marichal, okay. Uh, <clears throat> times early one is slowly creeping up the list. I really think it's weird and maybe good. 
that the AI is so hesitant to elect him. I don't know why they're hesitant on Yogi Berra. I mean, as a catcher, he destroys most benchmarks. I mean, the real-life version of Yogi Berra was even better, I think. Maybe it's actually about the same, actually. I don't know why it's so hard for him to get elected, but whatever, mate. All right. <clears throat> I think it would be hard to argue this team is worse than last year's. It would also be hard to argue that we're going to be anywhere near 500. Um, we, I think even, our, I think our best case scenario in terms of performance is we walk away with a, is we walk away with a top 10 pick. Um, and you're just going to go right on the DL. This was a... Oh, I can't put him there. That's fine. Whatever, bro. Yeah, I'm pretty hesitant to say that we're going to break 500. Unless a lot of things go right. I mean, a lot, a lot of things go right. A trade proposal. I could get Oscar Gamble back. Oh, Oscar, the years have not been kind to you. Uh, I don't object to trading Chris Flothy. I do object to trading him for someone that's not going to be around in two years. Do you have someone else that is of high quality? I bet you just drafted Dave Holman. No, that was last year's draft pick. Okay. How did you get two draft picks? Oh, I bet you didn't sign it. Yeah, you've got one from your, uh, yeah, okay. I mean, Bobby Castillo is a pretty interesting pitcher. He's even a decent third baseman. You would give me Bobby Castillo. Who's good and young on your major league roster? I can't afford Buddy Bell. I'm not going to pretend I do. John Tudor's another one who should have good stamina. He played in the majors for a while. Picking up John Tudor, who's just entering arbitration, and Bobby Castillo... Can I get one more player out of you? Again, preferably somebody young. Uh, it's like someone young who actually has like a decent future ahead of them, maybe. Ken Landro, I mean... I could move him to right. No, I've got Edwards there. Well, let's see if he'd even offer me Landro. You probably wouldn't. Yeah... No, you say you need a lot more. Like, how much more? Oh, I removed the wrong guy. I want a John Tudor. I'm going to make this offer, because here's why. John Tudor, as, let, me, let me make sure I'm not hallucinating. Yeah, what is with the AI saying these guys have no stamina? That's really weird. And these are guys who pitched for several starts. Hmm. I'm going to assume this offer. And we'll see if they take it. Because if they do, that's a really good deal for us. No way. What do I have to throw in to get you to take this deal? Scott Budner? I wasn't going to keep him anyway. But Budner might actually have kind of a future to him. Craig Swan, I just signed. I don't want to get rid of him. Mookie Wilson, maybe. I just got Dave Collins, right? Mookie Wilson's probably not going to play. But I'm also hesitant to give a player up that's that good. Mike Morgan might turn out to be better than he looks. You 
nope, I'm not going to make the deal. I'm going to hang on to Flothy and see if I can get a better deal out of him. Out of anyone, really. Oh, he raised my budget. Nice. Um, oh, did we set our scouting and development budgets? Yes, we did. I'm going to pour 450 grand into development. Because we just, we need to spend as much as we can on that. If we get a better deal for Flothy, I'll probably flip him, but I got to be a little bit choosy. There's Dave Winfield. Yeah, we are far from being, say, one or two players away from making the playoffs, which is why I'm not willing to spend a bunch of money on a player who probably won't even be around. Why, wow, you really want me to try McKayney in the rotation? Or in the, okay. We'll sort out who does what a bit later on. Lineups and depth charts. Please, bench coach, set all the things, please, and thank you. I'm getting really hungry for dinner. Chris Romano shows up to camp different, like what, like he's got like two penises or something? That would be different. Five weeks for Flothy. He should still be back by or close to opening day. Mike Scott. Three weeks for Hep Williams. Again, this is spring training. They'll probably be healthy. Willie Wilson, Torres, Quad. That's not ideal. I did want to give him an actual proper shot this year. Why are we so, like, respectable this spring training? That's kind of creepy, actually. Wish we could allow... I, w I thought about turning on draft pick trading, but... I found when I've done it in the past, the AI does a pretty shitty job of... Figuring out what people actually should be asking for, for a good draft pick. Uh, Tim Raines got better across the board. So did Rafael Tatis. John Allman got quite a bit better. That's it. That's an interesting but welcome improvement. Mike Morgan's putting more heat on his fastball, so there's still a chance that he might turn out to be uh, a worthwhile player. Don Mattingly got worse already. Uh, first of all, you're a first baseman. You will never play any position other than first base. Yeah, you are first base, without question. I'm not going to try to stick you in left field. Um, eh, I'm not too fussed about it. But that will conclude the episode. Um, first overall draft pick, Don Mattingly. Um, really excited to see how he turns out for us. He'd be a great compliment to Tim Raines. Um, and some of the other talented players that we have that we're just waiting to reach that next level. Uh, Chili Davis get any better? Not really. Okay. Fine, I didn't want him to get any better. I like him being... Oh, he is getting better. He is very close to forcing the issue. Because none of our catchers right now are terribly exciting. And he's actually a really good catcher in addition to being a pretty good hitter. But he could be like an all-time great hitter if we let him season just a little bit more. Let's see what he does in AAA this year. And then we'll make our decision from there. But that'll be it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please remember to like and subscribe and maybe comment down below. Let me know how you think the Blue Jays will do this season. Are we going to get to 500? Are we going to see what I hope, which is just that we get a lot more growth on the team? Players like Tim Raines and Dave Stewart. Um, ooh, Les Filikins. Oh, he is still getting a little better. 
He still could be good, though. I'm not willing to give up on him just yet. But, uh, but yeah. Until next time, this has been Avindian. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. And until next time, I bid you good day.